everyone is here. Welcome to the Budget and Property Subcommittee meeting. This is a, a special one that we decided to have. We have this meeting that we have another one on the 10th. Anna, would you please call roll? Member Goldman? Present. Member Stein? <coughs> Present. And Member Agnew? Present. You have a quorum. Thank you. We have one item on the agenda this evening. It's a presentation of the most recent version of the um, budget. So I'm going to hand it over to Janelle and Bobby. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Bobby, are you on? <sighs> okay, so we're going to begin with our newest update of our budget. And so we're going to begin. So thank you for everyone coming tonight. So we wanna talk about our priorities. And so people can see my screen. So at the beginning of this process, we talked about what things are we looking for as a district between our school district, school committee, administrators, and NACE. We share the commitment to these same priorities, provide our educators and staff and administrators with salaries to attract and maintain a highly qualified diverse staff, ensure each building has a robust, robust continuum of services and interventions to make sure all learners are supported and grow academically, socially, emotionally, and behaviorally, Administer regular screening and progress monitoring to provide the appropriate interventions. Consistent provide high quality evidence-based rigorous curriculum materials that empower all students to become active, engaged, and independent learners who give back to the community. And continues robust programming in the arts, physical education, career pathways, humanities, and STEM, and established classroom and school communities that are safe. So this year, we worked alongside with William principals looking at our school improvement plan, aligned with our district improvement plan from schools. So number one is empower and engage caregivers and community through classroom, school, and district collaboration that's culturally responsive and bios anti-bias, anti-racist practices. Strengthen and sustain professional growth, opportunities and collaboration for our district employees with a focus on equity and anti-bias work. Provide instruction for curriculum that empowers all students to explore who they are to embrace and honor the world with them and address and incur inequities. So at the beginning of this year, schools um, talked about the school improvement plan at one of our school committee meetings. At this present time, right now, this present time, our FY proposed budget is 37,770,276. It's a 7.4 increase from last year. We also have a school choice deficit of a 1,100,000. We also have an out of district tuition balance of 560,190. And the total proposed budget of out of district and school choice deficit is 39,430,396. And at this point in time, an FY revised city contribution to the budget is 4% increase from last year's budget, which is 36,565,747. Bobby, you can do the next slide. Uh, Superintendent Pearson Campbell, I'm sorry to interrupt for a moment, but these look, these are not, this is not what was a part of the updated budget documents that I received. Is that correct? This is since then? Yes, we, well, there's going to be some updates. I, and, uh, so we haven't seen these yet. Could you share these with us now? Um, yes. So I we can, can follow along, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on one second. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. That's okay. I just, on a have, we, we have just been moving. Hold on one second. <sighs> I thought there was shit. Sorry, we just been moving in. Um, Annie. Annie. Yes. Would you like me to share it? Yes, please. Okay, we'll do. Okay, thank you. Forgive me. Sorry, we've just been updating as we go. There's going to be several updates. 
So we can start with right here. All right, so I just wanna say that um, even though I feel like we've been talking about the um, cuts, not only the 1.2, but the school choice deficit um, of the 1.1 since December, it's apparent that my communication um, in regards to the additional amount was not clear enough. Um, there's, and also addressing some other questions, there's areas in the budget book that um, need improvement. I couldn't agree more. Um, it was pretty difficult to piece together um, information based on what I had, based on the FY23 book, which the book that I was looking at certainly didn't have the, even the correct budget in it. Um, so um, I, I understand better now what is um, appropriate for um, presentations and we'll move forward from there. Um, so anyways, to, to go on to this slide, it's including now just to show it, we're trying to show it clearer now. You have the total proposed budget with the school choice deficit and the out of district tuitions of 39,430. I moved um, 650,288 from um, school choice back into the general fund budget. And then we're using 400,000 in ESSER funds as we have discussed previously. Um, my additional thought was to use tailings from the um, fiscal 23 budget, which I totally understand was um, on shaky ground and that it, you know, it, it's not the way to do it, but I couldn't think of how else we were gonna do this without totally devastating the, um, the budget itself. So um, the city had given us a increase of 4%, 36, 565, 70, uh, 747. So we now needed a reduction of a million eight um, in order to present a balanced budget to the city. So additional reductions of 700,000 are gonna be identified in order to balance the school choice account, as well as add in amounts that we may need um, due to cuts uh, based on, um, or due to cuts plus unemployment. So we have unemployment costs that would be attributed to um, potential layoffs. We just wanna show the math behind it. I back to the school choice revolving account and auto district tuitions. So here you go, Bobby. Okay, so here's a, what was left was the 1,100,000 left um, as a deficit at the end of the year um, that was projected. What you saw earlier was moving the cost back into the school budget, the general fund of the 615-288. Um, so now we still have a deficit of 484-712. So originally I had thought to do that by the tailings um, and that would have left 115-288. So the 615-288 and the 484-712 would essentially eliminate the 1.1 million um, in deficit in the school choice as I had presented to me by Susan, the interim, previous interim. Okay. Um, and then to continue to balance the school choice um, expenses. I can't see the whole, can you make it smaller, Janelle, so I can see the whole slide. Sorry, it just keeps on. Sorry. Hold on, sorry. That's okay. So you wear this one or not this one right here? Yeah. Okay. And maybe I can change this for me. Hold on one sec. Yeah. Bobby, member Stein has a question. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Bobby, this is just sort of a clarification question. Um, 
when we look at the slide, so it's got the 1.1 and then the, the 658 um, cost transfer, is that, um, are we looking at costs that we transferred this year or are we looking at costs that we would have transferred next year? Like, could you explain, you know, cause this goes over multiple years, like mm -hmm. just which, which budgets these are, <laughs> yeah. pieces are hitting. Yeah, so the 615, 488, um, if you look at your actual cost center budgets, you'll see that we added that back into the general fund um, in the various schools. So that's taking the money that was typically spent in the um, uh, school choice purse, as you would say, and is now put back into the general fund purse. For the fiscal year 24 budget. Correct. Because we can't, because we have to move it because we've run the countdown. Okay. All right, I got you. And so, okay, so the the one, all right, and then the four eight four five one twelve is sort of like once we move that off the books going into fiscal year twenty four, that's the remainder deficit we have coming out of this year, FY twenty three. Is that correct? Correct. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. So now, if you can go to the next slide, Janelle. Um, so <clears throat> then we had, we're going to use, I think I lost something in the translation here because I didn't do these slides. Are you missing anything there, Janelle? No? The next one did not include the, um, the next one is going to talk about the out of district. We didn't do the, um, the tailoring because we didn't use that amount. So that was taken out. Okay. So the next one is the out of district. Okay. So we had the 561.90, we had to make up for the out of district tuitions um, in which we proposed the 400,000. Um, that would leave us with 161.90, which would be the other part of the, what we were typically gonna use in the tailings um of the school choice money or of the fy23 budget into the school choice okay so is this back to the original one yeah okay. this just shows you the math for the middle was how we received this number so this is all of it all together Okay, so the total proposed budget would have been 39,430 minus the 615,288 that we put into the general fund budget minus the 400 we're using in the ESSER 2 um, leaves us with the 38,415,108 not using that 600,000 that we were talking about previously in tailings, um, which would give us the revised. Um, budget cuts that we need to do. So the city gave us the 36,565 and the reduction is the 1849,361 in order to come to what the city had given us of the 36,565. That sounded confusing to me, <laughs> sorry. Um, so go ahead and are you going to talk about this next part, Janelle? Marla, you just take on the next section for one second. I just got a phone call. Okay. Um, so this is uh, just to explain why we did the non-rep increases. Um, classroom teachers receive COLA and STEPS. They work 185 days. Um, and per contract, they work some after school events. Building administration currently do not receive steps. They work 220 days, um, additional nights such as school committee meetings and after school events. And based on same education experience, some administrators earn less than a unit A employee. So the recommendation is to keep the 4% increase. The original was five, it was reduced to four in order to retain the building principals and district administrators because they 
um, support the curriculum implementation and have the, and hopefully will have and keep institutional knowledge of the buildings. We're planning for FY24 and beyond. Thank you, Bobby. This next slide, it's thinking about how this budget will be Im impacted. It would reduce the support to elementary and middle schools related to the implementation of the new math and language curriculum, reduce the fundings for curriculum development in math, language arts, social studies, and science, and reduce the support for supporting students with mental health. And we're thinking about the training and educators in our building and reduce the materials and supplies impact and the ability to support schools on anticipated special education programs. Our next step is to continue collaboration among Northampton Public Schools District, Northampton School Committee, Northampton School Administrators, and Northampton Association of School Employees and Caregivers to support educational goals in the school system. Continue to examine our facilities to ensure we are ready for the 21st century learning. As a district, examine the creation of stabilization fund for special education department, support our students with disabilities. The district commitment to communicating with the school community throughout the budget process to stay transparent. And as we go on, Bobby, um, these are the budget resources, um, class sizes. We click on here. These are the class sizes for this year with the, um, the FY 2023. So if you look at that, we talked about Bridge Street school class sizes. We looked at kindergarten enrollment. And so this is Bridge Street. We're gonna have two classes from pre-K to grade five. And the class sizes for pre K is 15 to 16, for kindergarten 2021, 20, grade one 20 to 19, grade two 19 to 19 students, um, grade three 20 to 20, grade four 19 19, grade five 20 to 20 to four. And right now, school choice um, on, the, on the right hand side is on the class enrollment. As we go on, Jackson Street currently, right now, as um, kindergarten two classes, grade one, three classes, grade two, two, grade three, three classes, grade four, three, grade five, two, and looking at the class sizes and school choice. Can I ask I a question? Right. Yes. Just yes. for any of these, I just want it to be clear that yes. that school choice number is the number of students that are from other districts in the that are coming into our school district and are or in those classrooms. And that number is included in the number of students in each class column, yeah. right? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we're on um, Jackson Street at this point in time. Um, we move on to revised Lee's classroom. They are doing something initiative for grade four and five. Um, grade four, that we have two in grade in one class would be a combo of one class with 20 students at different grade levels for grade four and five. And grade five, two classes um, have 22 students in both at this point in time. Um, would, and would you go, go back to Jackson, please? Sorry, I didn't. Sure. Sure. There you go. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Let me stop. Nope, carry on. Okay. Sir, full. And, we, and as always, we are currently always looking at our data in numbers and things can change. But at this point in time, at this moment, um, we'll keep moving forward for Ryan Road to be two classes at each grade level. Same thing about school choice. Their numbers are included in the class size. So they have two classes of each. Um, and in grade four, have 22 students in both. Grade five, 21 students in both. And on our lower grades, 18 and 19 students. And so that's at this point in time based on uh, enrollment of the schools. As we went on, I think the last time you asked about grades, um, they have paid class sizes, so we updated the numbers. So for sixth grade coming in with a total of 193 students, you have four um, teams of Supernova, Northern Lights have five, There's the number of assigned teachers on each team. In seventh grade, there's 214 students, so there are four teachers assigned to Green, Green Revolution, four teachers assigned to Green Monster. In eighth grade is 168 students, four teachers um, and the Carbon Knights, four teachers and Associate Eight. And then at this point in time, an estimate enrollment for a high school is total of 871. 
which they made a school choices in here too. Like we said before, these numbers are included in the grade for each part. So grade nine has 215 students, grade 10 has 213 students, grade 11 has 230 students, and grade 12 has 204. So as we go on, this is our class enrollment at this point in time, but we're always part of the budget process is keep on looking at our enrollment and class sizes and to look at the data for that. Um, as we go on, uh, these are just some resources. Bobby, this is your, um, today she sent out the FTEs for each, each school. Um, so if we can talk about that too, that's part of your, inside your packet that Annie has. So at this point in time, this is the current budget and it can change as we speak. So well, I'll stop sharing. Do you have any questions? There's the mayor. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure. Are you ready for me to jump in? I am. I am ready. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for that that uh, updated presentation. Um, so as we discussed at the meeting last week, and as has been talked about in the presentation that we just saw, um, there's actually a larger deficit than was being addressed with the budget that was previously presented. So um, this has been my concern for weeks. Actually, as I told you then and included in my budget message to the city last year, it's been my concern since the budget was voted last year, and even more so since Susan Wright closed out um, FY22 and walked us through the situation in August. Um, as Bobby said in the last meeting, we need to make cuts, um, but I'm extremely worried about school choice and the giant hole that's been created there. And I'm very worried about balancing the budget on unexpended tailings, which are currently unknown um, and are not consistent or guaranteed. And if not realized, we'll necessitate additional cuts mid-year. Um, and also um, concerned about using, again, one-time ESSER funds that won't be replaced. So since I and others at the on the committee expressed these concerns about balancing the budget uh, this way in the last meeting, the interim superintendent has now asked the building administrators to make additional cuts. Um, since receiving the budget book on March 10th, Finance Director Nardi, uh, she's Finance Director for the City of Northampton, and I have been asking questions and expressing concern about the situation we saw and have been having internal conversations about the situation that the Northampton Public Schools are in. The budget that was passed last, last year was based on optimism, um, or as I said at the time, it was rooted in magical thinking. Magical thinking that we would see a significant increase in Chapter 70 and state aid, um, and that the fair share amendment was gonna fill the hole created by last year's budget. The overspending of school choice has been cautioned against and highlighted for multiple years as it moved closer to the fiscal cliff. And it was clear that um, this was the year that we would go over that cliff. Um, I didn't support the budget that was passed last year with the amendment to increase by 250,000 because a source for those funds had not been identified. I was extremely concerned about the hole that would be created in the next year, this current year, um, and that there would need to be far deeper cuts. Um, as I also said, I was very worried about stability for our schools, but also for the people who work in our schools, and that I greatly feared getting back to a place where every year there is uncertainty about what the budget situation is going to look like and whether there would need to be layoffs, which is what the situation was before the fiscal stability stabilization plan was established in 2014. So this situation we are in is exactly what we were cautioned about. Um, and uh, last year, the prevailing sentiment was, well, we'll deal with it if it, when it, if it comes, and hopefully it won't come, this, that situation. Um, but it's here, and so at least now we are all on the same page. So the situation is extremely dire. There are two truths about this situation. One is, it could be a case study for why you don't use one-time funds or reserve funds for salaries and recurring and compounding expenses. 
And the other truth is that the hole that these choices have created and the depth of the cuts needed to fix it are truly too big for the district to absorb this year. So as I said, the city of Northampton finance director and I have been working on this for almost the last month. Um, this has been a very challenging year with a lot of transition and we need to get the district back on track. A statement will be going out momentarily announcing that I as mayor am preparing to use $1.2 million from the city's stabilization fund to cover a large portion of the $2.3 million shortfall in the FY24 budget as part of a two-year plan to balance the school budget and return it to a strong fiscal foundation. To put Northampton schools on a path to fiscal stability, the proposed FY24 NPS budget will still require some cuts to address the amounts uh, in the proposed budget dependent on the current FY23 budget being underspent, those tailings again, which is not a guarantee. Um, the hope and what the administration now needs to work on is that these cuts should be able to be achieved mostly through attrition without a significant loss of staff or any existing programming. To ensure a balanced budget in FY25, I will be asking the new school administration to produce a path with additional spending reductions and a balanced budget by this December, so earlier in the annual budget process than usual. While I'd rather not welcome the new superintendent in her first year with additional tasks or concerns, um, it is better than handing her a decimated district or a situation where she needs to make mid-year cuts. For the resulting two-year plan to succeed, it will have to end the practice of spending school choice funds faster to a larger extent than the revenues are received by them. And we have to end the, re the reliance on one-time ESSER funds from the Federal Pandemic Relief Program. I and NACE have pledged to work together with State Senator Joe Comerford and State Representative Lindsay Sabadosa to increase, to increase state funding for MPS. We've pledged to work as hard as we can to do everything we can to increase our funding. Um, and I hope that the school committee will join us in that work. And um, I thank Andrea Gito and NACE for their partnership with me. We've also pledged to work together using these one-time stabilization funds in FY24 and to, to make any necessary adjustments to the school budget without sacrificing the quality of education for our students this year and next year to again return the MPS budget to stability and to start to rebuild the school choice account. So this is not a fix for the deficit as it is just as unsustainable as the use of school choice was in this manner. The school reserves have been decimated by this practice and it would do the same for the other stabilization accounts. Unless addressed, the deficit will grow larger every year. The city cannot sustain this size of increase as city revenues aren't nearly as high as these percentage increases. So this is what I'm committing to do this year, but the school committee needs to join me and NACE in committing to stabilize the budget over these next two years. And it can't just be talk about it, it has to be action in reality. Thank you for listening. Thank you. I also shared the updated presentation with the new contribution from the city and thank you very much, Mayor. So that is in our news presentation that I created. Thank you. Number sign. Thanks. Um, I I was wondering if um, the superintendent. Did you mean the? There's an updated one we can see now. Is that? Yes, yeah. I had to. I was waiting, but okay. I so to you. do we? Is it in the folder or where? where I just it? I just shared it with Annie. Okay, so it'll become okay. Yes. Um, great. Um, check the slides out. I believe I shared it with everyone. If you want to check in your inbox, please. Please do community, uh, school committee members so that I know I did share it with everybody. So, and I can share it now. Yeah, is it the SC4423? Yeah, it's yeah. the newest presentation, the newest one. Yes, that's the one. Great. And this has the new amount with um, the city stabilization fund. So it shows you um, the new the amount is 649,361. And so my out team tomorrow morning, we will start the process again, but thank you so much, Mayor and the Nason School Committee helping us on this journey. But it is right here. So it shows that how 
we moved money from school choice to general fund using the ERSA fund. And then we also looked at the stabilization. So the new the FY contributions to 37,765,747, which gives us a new deficit of 649 that we are going to work on tomorrow to look at um, plans. So that's it right there. I'll stop sharing my screen, but that's the new budget. Thank you. Um, yeah, obviously a lot to react to. I'm I'm grateful to the mayor for uh, rightly recognizing the situation and providing additional funding um, to make the cuts um, that we do have to make, not nearly as catastrophic, I think, as what we were feeling. So I definitely appreciate that. Um, and without sort of looking at everything yet, I, you know, I guess my main concern, and, and I, I would agree. I hope the school committee can really think about some long-term planning and figure out some different structures and safeguarding um, for the district. But I worry that two years isn't enough time. Um, and the reason I worry that is because one of the things we've looked at um, throughout this budget process is the significant amount of FTEs we've increased over the last seven years. Right, we've added about a quarter of FTEs. We've also seen most of those in special education, and we've seen a significant rise in IEPs. And those type of costs can't be unwound easily, right? Those are essentially obligations that we have taken on. And we're feeling, at least in part, in addition to inflation and other things, um, the crunch of those expenses against the general education budget. And that's not going to get sorted out in two years. So I guess what, what I'm trying to say is that I think that we also need to look at um, how much we're spending per student, what percentage of the actual revenues from the city we are taking. Um, I mean, I went and took a look at this earlier today. I asked in an earlier meeting um, what folks thought about the average cost per student, right? which we are pretty low at compared to our comparison districts, and whether or not that was a good measure, why or not. Um, if we look at MPS, even with all the insurance and benefits and everything baked in, we're still only at 43% of the overall city budget. And then when you strip out state and federally administered through the state aid to us, it goes even lower. So the school itself is not MPS, right? The district is not taking a lion's share of the local receipts. Uh, I don't know what that right number is, but I do think in the coming years, the two years isn't going to be enough to stabilize us without massive cuts. We're still going to have these asset positions running out. Um, and I, I worry that in two years, we won't be able to get it done without making significant painful cuts. That's sort of the situation we've inherited. Um, I keep remembering now, I thought it was odd at the time, but now I understand it. And one of the last meetings John had with us, he expressed that one of the reasons, the main reason when he said publicly at the meeting why he wanted to leave the district and take this new position was because of the looming fiscal cliff. And I fully appreciate that now, but uh, that situation, you know, I think we need to recognize how we got there, <laughs> decisions that led us there. Um, this new school committee voted one year uh, on a budget we inherited largely and came in on. So I I'm frustrated, I'm as frustrated as the mayor. I just worry that two years isn't gonna be enough um to get us to a place where things are sustainable um i also just wanted to go back to the, i think it's the second slide in the deck that uh, the superintendent presented um i don't know if we can pull that back up sorry janelle the first one or the second one i think it was the second one um uh oh sorry it's the i think it's number five um Okay, hold on one second. It's the one that is like, you know, our fiscal year 24 budget connects to our district improvement plan goals. Sorry, my screen is just acting up. Is it, give me one second. Is this is this one or? Uh, yeah, that's it right there. Thank you. Okay. So the reason I wanted to bring it up is because I was looking at this when you pre presented it earlier, and I was thinking about 
what member Robbins asked us to do at the last um, school committee meeting, which was a budget tells you where your values are, right? And if we're saying our values are embodied in these goals, and these four things are the things that we're doing, I would want whatever cuts are being made to balance against how we're making these, how we're meeting these goals, right? Um, so, you know, empower and engage caregivers in the community through, you know, uh, et cetera. Like, so what, what sort of resources are we putting towards this? Where is it reflected in the budget? Number two, strengthen and sustain professional growth opportunities and collaboration for district employees with a focus on equity and anti-bias work in order to increase student engagement and mastery of content area standards, i.e. learning goals. Where is this in the budget? How are we prioritizing it? Three, and how will we do that with the cuts? Three, provide instruction and curriculum that empower all students to explore who they are, to embrace and honor the world around them, to identify and think critically about the messages they receive, and to be powerful contributors to change. And four, address the current inequity of educational resources through a data-driven framework of strategies that provide equitable outcomes for students. So I think if we're saying these are the things in our district improvement plan that we're connecting to our budget, I would want to know how whatever what we've proposed and what cuts we're going to make support these goals. Um, and so that I, I would urge us to try to do that because I thought that was a really important centering suggestion. Thanks. Thank you, Member Stein. Um, <clears throat> I was not, um, I didn't know about this shift before this evening's meeting. I wasn't um, notified. So um, I am wanting to um, thank you like start with a lot of gratitude. Thank you, uh, Mayor, for really hearing the call I uh, of the community. I have received a lot of emails. Um, and also, um, yeah, so really appreciate your continued support. And also that in this instance, it's not uh, just support, but also creating um, or or asking for us to sort of put together uh, a, a very focused strategy to manage our finances going forward in a way that has not been approached up to this point, where we're really looking at forecasting and um, flow in a way that I haven't heard people talking about before and something that obviously needed to come up when that first ESSER application was approved, honestly. like, um, but. Here we are. So thank you very much for that. I also appreciate uh, that you're working with. Um, so uh, also thanks to Janelle and Bobby for your continued efforts. You've been working on the budget forever and it is still very demanding. I'm feeling a lot of pressure for it right now as well. Um, so thank you for riding that wave with us. Um, and I'd also like to thank um, Mike and Gwen you know, as we sort of do our best to serve this role, which is a very tricky position to be in um, with all of the moving pieces. Also just noticing that there are a lot of people at this meeting. And so thank you to all of you for your continued engagement, uh, for showing up. It makes a big difference. And um, it also helps with the messaging that's happening out there when people are coming to these meetings. Um, so too? you may my alt team is on here and this this has been a, a journey from october to now to think differently and how we examine our data our numbers and our support and so they are on here today and i just want to acknowledge them and know this is a long night for them because they get up early in the morning so i just want to thank them too because they've they've been with me on this journey Yes, I thank you. I also <laughs> um, want to thank um, the alt team and also the work with NACE. Um, it's it's really feeling like 
under this pressure and urgency, there's a lot more communication happening. And for me, I find that to be the only way out of this. So um, I appreciate everyone sort of keeping, trying to stay steady um, through this very difficult budget season. Um, I am very, okay, I have three questions. A little one is, is there a Ryan Road FTE report? I got Leeds, Bridge, and Jackson, but I did not get Ryan Road. Yeah, um, I did send over everybody but the high school and the district. And I'm going to have those for you for Thursday. Um, but I don't think Annie included them for some reason, but I'm pretty sure she yeah. got them. Ryan Road, JFK, in the high school? And then no, the district, not. right? You should have everybody but the high school and the district. Okay. But I think so Annie, only got three in the packet, right? Right. I only have Jackson, so Leeds, I, and Bridge. Annie, when you have a chance, if you could share, you should have the um, Ryan Road and the JFK. Okay. I'm taking a look at that now. Apologies if, if I missed it before. I'll get that in there quickly. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay. The next question is, um, um, I appreciate looking at the school by school, what the classrooms and the enrollment looks like, but I am wondering, like, after this shift, which was not discussed, which wasn't, you know, the, the added funding was not included in the presentation before the mayor's announcement. So I'm wondering what the budget looks like now that you're proposing. And then my last question uh, is for the mayor, sort of like, I uh, am grateful for the funding. I appreciate the need for there to be um, a build out of, a, of the plan for how we're going to truly address this and I'm wondering how far forward thinking that is or what the next steps are um, aside from figuring out this budget and approving it how how to deal with the next two two five ten years thank you so I can answer to I think the next steps for us would be to um, redo the budget, meet with the alt team again, come up with the cuts that we now have to um, do given the additional funding that the mayor and Charlene found for us. Thank you very much. Um, and I know Andrea Gito did a lot of work for that as well. Um, so I think we need to prepare that and have that ready um, for the Monday budget and property subcommittee meeting. And connect as Michael Stein was saying about the goals. So when we do the reductions, how does the reductions connect to our goals? So that's so we'll look at our chart and say how this connects to the goals for for the future. And so um, that's what we're working on now. I already sent an email tomorrow at eight thirty in the morning. Is our next meeting to look at how we look at. Um, the next reduction is 649 plus unemployment. So we have that. So that's coming tomorrow at 830. So we'll be ready for you for Monday's meeting. And we'll have try to have the presentation in. Oh, sorry. They're so excited. That was them texting. Um, uh, so we'll have the presentation ready for you. I'll go by Fridays, so but you have Thursday or Friday. Tomorrow's Thursday, right? Tuesday. My day's going to one. I'm sorry. Um, so we'll have the presentation ready for you by Thursday so that you'll have the over the weekend to review it, but it's not as bad as we just went through. So um, this is not as, thank you so much. Member Stein. Uh, yeah, I just had a few questions. Um, I'm trying to do the math in my head um, and maybe Bobby can help me if she has a better handle on it. So we were looking at, 2.3, right? And then, so now we're looking back again at 1.2. So we're sort of back in the position we were on the first, door. like if you have a sense, Bobby, I don't know if you do, but if you have a sense of what the total figure at we're looking to cut. Um, I, have a, I have the slide, it's right here, 649. I'll show you right now. Bobby and I can, and then Bobby can walk you through it. 
Well, just to answer you too, Member Stein, is that, um, so you're right, 2.3, the mayor and Charlene found the 1.2 um, as the fix for the moment. Um, that leaves us with the 1.1, and then we have um, the 400 we're still planning to use from ESSER. Is that so on that, top of the 1.1, or is that then taken out of the 1.1? That's taken out of the 1.1, which will leave you with the um, 600 plus. Okay, and cuts. Okay. And yeah. so that, sort of like figuring out then which cuts to make under that, of that total, right? The 700,000 or so. Uh, right. Um, oh, sorry. Six is that the six fifteen? Is that still the right number? Yeah, slide six forty nine three sixty one. Oh, I'm sorry. I see where you're pointing out. Okay, yeah. six forty nine three sixty one. Okay, so then we would talk about the way to close that gap. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, this is like a very particular question now that I've been thinking about um, when I was looking at the last presentation, which is. Um, it has to do with JFK, and I and I was thinking about this when we looked at the slides with those groupings. Um, and I, as I understood it, right, so there's two teams at sixth grade at JFK, and that was a change made this past, this current year, right? Last year it was made. And one of these suggestions was to eliminate the third special education teacher who was um, supporting that sixth grade class. Um, when I was looking at those enrollment figures for what would be next year, sixth grade and seventh grade, they're not that different. So I'm wondering if there is some difference in the caseload of special education services that are required that would justify the cut from three to two. And then beyond that, like what for seven and eight, like I don't, I haven't, my kids haven't lived through the middle school yet. So I'm, I'm speaking with as not a parent who has experience with the school. So um, with the seventh and eighth grade, like how many special education teachers do they have per grade? And then what do the caseloads look like? So in other words, like the question is trying to get at like, what is the data there that's supporting that cut aside from what well, we had three teams, now we have two. So now we can cut it to two teachers instead of three. So I, I wanted to sort of get at that. We don't have to answer it now, um, but if we're gonna come back again on Monday, but. I didn't understand that piece in the prior budget. May I, may I just make sure I have it? Number one, you want to connect to the goals. Number two, you want to make sure the caseloads for grades six and seven at the JFK, seven, eight. So I'm just make sure I got all your questions ready. Sure. Is that it? Yeah. And so, yeah, it would really be like if we're going to, I'm trying to think about the most succinct way to say it. Yeah. Um, I guess, is it equitable if we reduce a uh, special education teacher in sixth grade um, in regards to the caseloads for the rest of the school, right? So for grade seven and grade eight, how many special education teachers are there and what are their caseloads? Yeah. Yeah. And like, and also like, you know, I don't know what we know about the cl incoming class, right? Maybe there's a, a shift in the IEPs that justifies a reduction. I don't know. But grade six is the incoming fifth grade is coming in. So that's that number right there. But I can also too work with Mr. Dixon and the special ed team. So looking at that information for you. But this is a brand new day now. 649 sounds better than 1.8 and 1.2. So uh, we can work on that. Oh, and um, one other question um, to think about is I know that a projected tailings, right? So for people watching, we mean like what's left over at the end of the year that wasn't spent. For many reasons, right? A position wasn't filled, an expense wasn't as much as you thought, et cetera, right? So we were projecting 600,000 left over at the end of the fiscal year. Um, you know, partly the mayor was worried, well, what, rightfully, like if we commit those dollars, but it turns out we don't actually recognize that, then what are you going to do? So um, now that that uh, problem is avoided, what are we going to do with whatever tailings remains? Um, and and sort of, I want to put this on the table to think about. Um, my suggestion would be to use put half of whatever remains and form a special education revolving account 
and put that into it as like a, a down payment on that account. Um, and then the other half, I would say mitigate any expenses that we're budgeting now to make cuts at that we wouldn't have to if we had a little bit of extra money. So say uh, for the sake of argument, say it came in at 600, we would put 300 in a revolving special education account. Um, and then we would put 300 towards this deficit in a way that supports the goals. So food for thought. Okay. Um, so, so, Super, um, so Jenna, can you speak a little bit to, I'm a little confused about the presentation from earlier tonight. Is that because like, it sounds like you knew that the, there was funding coming in from the mayor. I, I can, mayor can talk. I'm... Yeah. So I, I'm sorry, Member Goldman, if you're feeling like you were left in the dark. So I'm this... not feeling left in the dark. I'm just trying to see so what I can in the light. I was able to share this with Dr. Pearson Campbell very late in the day. I think even after five, she and Bobby must have scrambled to, to be able to have produced additional slides. Um, but this, this was very late in the day and um, that- This it, happened today. Yes. Amazing. Okay. All right. I'm just trying and to- As I out. said, I've been, my office, Doc, uh, Director Nardi and I have been sort of working on it and trying to absorb the information and come up with a plan and figure out um, what needed to be addressed um, and, and then how we could come up with a path forward. Um, and we've been working on that for, you know, three weeks or so, but um, but yes, this information was just sh shared very, very late in the day. Okay, thank you. I'm just trying to figure out sort of what the plan is, uh, like what how, what you have in mind, Mayor, for how this moves forward. Like, okay, we're going to do this. We need to do this, and we need to do this, and we need to do this. And part of that is uh, sort of forecasting and planning forward. So, I mean, the first thing we need to do is figure out what, you know, what needs to be addressed in this budget cycle and um, what, uh, you know, what cuts need to be made. Um, <clears throat> and then as, you know, as we welcome the superintendent in July, you know, start to review all the information with her and Bobby, and work on, um, and while simultaneously, you know, bussing our butts out to the state house and um, doing everything we can to try and get any additional state aid that we can, and and work on, um, work on fair share and and see how we can lobby our um, lobby not just our, our legislators are are behind us, but lobby. Um, everybody else and the governor to make sure that fair share is has um, allocation for K through 12, which right now it's not really clear that it's going to have significant funds directed that way um, and directed in a way that will actually benefit somewhere like Northampton. So um, there's been talk about directing some of those funds more towards transportation, which um, would be important for regional districts is not necessarily going to work. It's not going to help us. So we need to work very hard to advocate for, for our district and what, um, what we need to see out of fair share after having worked so hard to get it passed. So, um, so doing all of that in tandem and then um, working with the administration to figure out, um, you know, what, what the deficit will look like next year to get us sort of whole and um, and you know what cuts would have to be made to to kind of get us back to that stable footing where we can have regular um, increases. So you know, like a three or four percent increase, but that can't be spiking up to you know seven percent because there's an over million dollar deficit. So you know we have to figure out again how to 
um, address the, the school choice deficit, but um, also account for all that's been put into other one-time funds like ESSER and figure out how we're going to move forward from that um, in these next two years. Does that give you? And then you mentioned five and 10 years. I mean, I think you're absolutely right that we do need to think longer. And I have heard members kind of talk about next steps and maybe sort of larger structural changes um, that they're interested in exploring. And so I think that that's a really important conversation to, to have and think about how we can um, and really start to do some long-term planning about what, what will not just be sustainable, but will allow the district to to really thrive in the way that we we want it to with the amazing educators that we have and staff and and the amazing schools that we have but we we need to figure out how we can more structurally manage the budgets okay i really appreciate you um commenting on that it has felt you know other other budget seasons have been a little rocky, um, and a lot of it was because of the COVID piece. And so as we're kind of shifting, we're still dealing with that, but we're, we don't have the funding or that, that kind of support that we used to have. I just noticed that what you're talking about isn't some isn't a conversation I've heard happening in like a concrete people coming together, having a meeting, building a plan kind of way. Mm -hmm. um, and just wondering how that actually happens, you know, like um, what does a successful or productive ad hoc committee look like um, and, and how do they get work done is my main concern, especially with this budget season has been, there's been a lot of different numbers coming at us. Um, and so this is just helpful. And I think it's been very stressful for many people. Um, and, and so I want to kind of hold that in mind too, about if, you know, we can open this out, starting these very significant conversations where we have a, a very important job to do, um, will really bring some, um, you know, some comfort and cohesion which is already happening in this budget season. I just don't want it to hurt, to hurt so much. Um, Member Agna. Thank you. I just, well, I want to echo a couple of things, including the extraordinary collaboration that happened that we are witnessing tonight and hearing the report of from the mayor um, with Senator Comerford and Representative Sabadosa and the and NACE, I just, I, I hope that this is headlines because I think it speaks so much to the kind of efforts that our district can make together. And, uh, and I think what you were talking about, Member Goldman and, and the mayor, that we do need to have a community conversation about the school district that we have and whether that means some kind of um, strategic planning for the next three to five years, um, it probably is very important to do that sooner than later. Um, and it's there's been a lot of ideas floated. So I'm I'm excited that we might be able to have that larger conversation about our school district and not just go year to year in these kinds of situations. I also just, I think at some point, whether we have a budget workshop this summer or some kind of other um, gathering that we can sort of understand some of the things that have been brought up, I, I think it's really important that we understand what, what is real about how much the city is providing us. And I, I think there's some uh, difference of opinion about that, that um, Member Stein has brought up a, a lower number than I think the city is saying that it, they provide us. I also hope that the special ed department and director Dixon will be involved in the conversation about whether or not these increased FTEs are um, legitimate or that they are warranted. I, I'm concerned of, about hearing the, the kinds of um, comments about departments that um, we, I think we have to trust the director to help us understand that. Um, but I just would like to thank the collaboration that's happened here. And I don't think it's, uh, even though I, I can imagine it seems like found money, I think it's purposefully um, 
applied money that is happening to get us through this very disastrous situation and hopefully get us on this a stabilization plan that we can then go forward. So I just wanted to say that and thank you very much. Thank you, Gwen. Mayor, did I cut you off before? No, not at all. Okay, Member Stein. I didn't know if you wanted to go to member Robbins first. I, I know we made it so that all the school posted it so the school committee members could speak. Um, I don't know if you want to go to her first and then back to me, or I'm happy to go now, whatever order you want. Yeah, I would like to go with you first and then uh, go to member Robbins. Thank you. Yeah, um, and just a few things. I think um, I think member Agnes is right that we need to be careful um, about identifying certain departments, but I, I also think that we need to, you know, it may be the case that what we found out is that we are actually experiencing really high needs and we need those FTEs, but then we need to fund them appropriately. And the part of the reason why we have this $1.1 million deficit that thankfully the mayor is bailing us out of is because for the previous three to four fiscal years, uh, we balanced it um, by spending on a surplus. So we didn't adequately fund the changes we made in staffing for a number of years. And arguably that's coming home to roost. So $5 million helped us cover it for a while. Now here we are, right? So we never made those sort of changes. Um, the other thing I wanna point out is that there are a lot of things that we can't control, right? Which the mayor really pointed out in her presentation. We can't control insurance rates going up 10, 11%. We can't, and, you know, we can't change inflation that we're facing on fuel and everything else. Um, but that means, though, that then we're cutting things that we do have control over. And oftentimes, those are not the things we would want to cut on to live our values. Right. So that's a very difficult situation. Um, and, and the last piece I want to mention is, you know, if you, for folks who are interested, like there's a great PowerPoint that the mayor presented. Um, at the beginning of this budget process, which really lays out fiscal year 24, what happened in fiscal year 23. It's available on the city website. You can look through it. Um, and I think what you'll find, as I have found, is that we're often told, rightfully so, on a certain interpretation that 54% or 55% of the overall revenues are going towards schools. And that's sort of true. But when you begin to disaggregate those numbers, you see that the percentages that are going to MPS, it's not half, more than half the budget. We also have another school district in the town, right? That's part of it. Um, there's benefits that are part of it. There's capital expenses that are part of it. Um, and there's local receipts and then there's state and aid and federal aid that's paid through the state, right? And when you break all those things down, I think what you see, at least as the way I see it is that not a majority of the local receipts, the local tax revenues are going to NPS. And that's, you know, a choice of values, right? So counting money we get from the state for chapter 70 funds, which can only be used for education funding is not a city contribution. You know, counting ESSER funds that we get, which can only be used in certain ways for the schools are not city contributions, but they are part of that you know, 50 something percent thing that we hear. So I would encourage anyone who's interested in the details to take a look, um, and take a look at the various ways that other folks look at comparisons, whether it's for student spending on the DESI site or other places, um, take a look at the comparison districts that were used in that budget. Um, and I think you could draw your own conclusions, but I think there is a real conversation to be had about how much of the money that we actually have discretionary control over is coming to NPS versus our peers. And depending on what we find our needs to be in the next two years, it may be that we need a larger share of the pie. And that question is how much do we give to the schools versus other departments? What new departments can we afford or not afford? What other sort of investments that Northampton makes um, we might not be able to make if we're adequately gonna fund the schools. So there's a federal piece, there's a state piece, all these sort of pieces, there's only so much we can control. And tonight the mayor showed us again that at the end of the day, it's only this city that's really gonna help us out. 
when push comes to shove, because those other changes just take too long, whether it's the fair share, changes to reimbursement rates, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm excited to have that conversation. I'm excited to try to work with all of you to find a real plan to put the district on solid footing. But we need to be honest about how we got here, which I think we're all, we're all getting there and what we inherited and what it's going to take to get out of it. So thanks. Thank you, Member Robbins. Thank you, Member Goldman. Um, it's been a very interesting evening. And I will say, out of my role of school committee as a taxpayer, thank you very much, Mayor, for being able to step up and uh, make the dollars work. This is how I want my tax dollars to work. I want kids to come first. And I really appreciate your willingness to move forward with that. I understand the repercussions from it. I understand the forward thinking. I am excited about what the new conversations might be about rolling out um, a strategic planning committee that thinks um, knowledgeably, gets advice from people who are experts that really says, what is it we want um, our kids to be able to graduate from high school knowing and being able to do and how do we fund it and make it work? Uh, and reminding ourselves that we're not where we want to be as a district. We are lacking teachers at every level um, in tier one support and learning. And we need to rectify that. We need to be able to say, um, this is where I want to send my kids to school because they're getting a great education. We heard a presentation today by one member of Northampton High School who talked about all the electives that they would love to be able to offer, but we simply don't have the staff to do so. And it was so enticing. You just listened to it and said, I want to take those courses. Um, and it's exciting to think forward to um, a plan that might actually move us forward in a sense of uh, a long term, which I know doesn't help the short term, but I want to actually reflect back as well on the short term. And I wonder if Dr. Pearson Campbell, if you can show us again the page about the comparison between what um, I think it was, I'm not sure how it was phased, but district employees who work all year long and teachers, that salary difference. It was actually the page, yeah, that showed the difference between people who are working. Are you able to see it? Yes, that's it. Thank you so much. That's really helpful. Um, I will just say, as an educator myself, um, I I took exception to this. Um, I don't know how my people who are working in the district feel now. I do understand how it works to work um, a 220 day a year job as well, but um, classroom teachers, in my comprehension, work incredibly full time and overtime and every weekend and every vacation throughout the year. They don't take the summer off. They're constantly revising curricula. They're restoring the energy they need to be with children all day long. I don't think it's equitable to make a comparison between a classroom teacher and a building administrator based on the days worked. And I want us to be very careful about how we address that. I also want us to really think about um, if we come back to uh, point A and we think about, rethink about where cuts need to be made. I remember you saying, Dr. Pearson Campbell, we really want to prioritize people who are in front of the kids. And when I looked back on the continuing series of presentations and budgets they were given, I just didn't see where the window was to make um, district district cuts that none of us want to make, but might have less of an impact on who's standing in front of the children every single day. And I'm hoping that we can be creative about that and rethink that and maybe step back from going to principals and saying, you make the cuts and thinking more about where are the cuts that we could make that could get us through the additional monies that we need. Um, and also be able to maybe set a precedent for how we move forward in prioritizing the work that we need to have happen. So thank you for letting me share that. Thank you, Member Robbins. Member Stein. Sorry, I forgot to say one thing earlier and I'll try to be brief, which is um, 
the piece that I didn't mention, um, that I've been thinking about this a lot, is it felt really good in, over the last year um, to demonstrate in our last budget that we value our teachers. I think the contract we reached was an important signal to do that. And that going forward, equitable pay and an actual con like stated concern about retention of our people, I think is important. I mean, I, this, this goes back to that slide that Meg just looked at, but when I hear about retention of administrative leadership, and I don't hear a lot about retention of teachers, it, it bothers me. And I was reading an op-ed recently in the Gazette from, I believe it was a school board member from Amherst, and he was discussing the contract negotiations and imploring folks to be based in reality. And one of the points he made was, you know, on average, you make 20,000 more a year than the folks in Northampton. So what are you complaining about, basically? And I, I, I think that's a problem. I think for a long time, the district has balanced the books on the backs of a frontline workforce, and we've begun to address that. Um, but that needs to be a priority for us going forward. And retaining these people needs to be our priority. I'm hopeful that we'll do some of that work when we talk about the Green River Report and some of the retention policies and practices they talked about for the type of workforce we want to have. But I, I think that's a huge piece of this. And um, uh, it's got to be part of our thinking. And it can't be looked at as a liability um, on the balance sheet as a reason not to do it. Um, so thank you. Thank you. OK. Um... Janelle, I'm wondering if uh, you know if this was your presentation and you gave your presentation. Then we had the mayor's piece, uh, and then you spoke briefly about what that would mean. But actually, it it means that we don't have a lot more to discuss at this meeting because we don't have a full picture of what we're actually working with at this point for no. this budget. Is that correct? Right. We received the message from the mayor, thankfully but we didn't do the updated reductions and thinking about how it connects to uh, member Stein. We're talking about the goals, but I can say that my, I already sent an email out to my alt team at 8.30 in the morning. We began the process again and using that connection. So um, we have been working on this since October, but we will, we will keep moving and keep moving forward on behalf of students and families and our educators. But um, with, I, it's just like a surprise. And so um, my presentation is not up to date, but. Sure, I appreciate that. Uh, the budget season always lasts. Doesn't really matter when you start. It lasts until as close to April 15 as we can get. <laughs> That's kind of how it goes. But it does seem like another uh, higher hill to get over than expected. So um, I guess then, um, it doesn't seem like we have a lot more to talk about in terms of this budget. There isn't. We don't have a. a we don't have a rel, relevant a relevant budget to work with at this moment. So, um, even though I have some questions about these FTEs and whatnot, I think if you can give really, us any questions, it'll be helpful too, because we always take in your questions that we receive in the email. So. Mm -hmm. If you want to give us now and Bobby and I and we can work with the alt team, we're always looking for your feedback. Yeah. It's, it's better now than tomorrow or Friday. Okay. Okay. Um or you can email it to us. Okay. Yeah, I will email it to you and then we can discuss it at the next meeting. Um really it's a, a lot of focus on the on the par Paris. Yeah, just trying to see, like on these um, FTE sheets, most of these numbers, right, are all the same from what was budgeted to current. There's almost no discrepancy between budgeted and current. But I wonder. The updated one for next year. So I know um, Josh Dixon did something for next year. So mm -hmm. he has something together for that. So I can have him presented. So Bobby. You can talk to, I know okay. we talked about that today. Jen. And that's what I'll do. Now that I have these FTEs, I can compare them with um, Josh's memo and right. 
sort of, and then, I, you know, I'll do my homework before I start See, sending in them, questions. If they moved from grade levels, if they moved to a different school and the right. parents moved, the reductions, we, we've been like one happy family looking at our parents. So we looked at that number. So that sheet right. that you sent for FTEs have changed, right, Bobby? Right, so just to make it really clear, so the FTEs that I report on the sheets that you just got mm -hmm. are what I did for budget. Mm -hmm. and what was budgeted in FY23. So it may be different because there is some moving, there's some shifts between schools. Mm -hmm. um, but, and, and that doesn't reflect that in my FTEs. Your FTEs isn't showing any of those shifts. Right. That's, so why, I, words, that's why I'm not seeing any, I'm seeing almost no movement in your sheets. Well, okay, so in my sheets, I took, again, so the budget book that I have from FY23 yeah. had one number. The document that I worked off of had another. Mm -hmm. mm. And then the personnel spreadsheet that I had had another number. Mm -hmm. So what I worked with was my personnel spreadsheet. Right, Doctors that's what I have talked and we have confirmed that we have the right number of paras, but what I have may be changing between buildings, but the overall number should remain the same. Does that make sense? Yes. What you just said makes sense to me. And I see the number for like the budgeted number, I'm assuming that is the number that was from the approved budget at this time last year. And then there's the current, which is like actual. Now, does that include vacancies? It does include vacancies. Yes. Okay. And, and then. Oh, sorry. Just to add, I've sent that to principals and they have not had a chance to review what they actually have for current. So we may update that a little bit. Okay. It's very, you know, there's not a lot of movement. There aren't a lot of places where I can be like, what happened here? Because nothing happened. So that's good. And then it's just the one regular ed ESP that I'm, is that from, I'm, instead of assuming I'm going to ask, is that from the first grade? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why it comes from, it went from three to two, and it's in other funding. Right. And where are the other two regular ed ESPs? If uh, there were three, one was taken out first grade, there's two still in the building. It depends on which school you're looking at, actually. Sure. Okay. Yep. That makes sense to me. And then there's the ES, uh, the special ed pairs on top of that at the bottom of each of the these pages. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these need to be updated also, is what you're saying. Well, what I'm the principals reporting their actuals or the their current, vacancies? The current, right. Well, and I guess that depends on how you want it reported. So, do you, because of the vacancies we expect to fill. Right. The so, vacancy is not so relevant. It's, right. I mean, it's, it's important information, but it's not particularly relevant for putting together our budget for next year. Right. And that's information the principals have and will make informed decisions about that That happens before it gets to us. Okay, I just was wondering if these, if I was just checking these forms. Okay, uh, I think that's all I have here. Um, and I, very much look forward to uh, viewing the revised budget with um, the new contribution adjustment included. We will review that on the 10th. That meeting is at 4.30. April 10th is a, is it Tuesday? No, Monday, next Monday. Um, and uh, member Agna, member Stein, do either of you have any other notes? No. 
No, I, okay. I move that to adjourn this meeting. Thank you. Second. Annie? Uh, Would Member you? Goldman? Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Member Agna? Yes. And Member Spine? Yes. Okay. Thank you, everyone. See you soon. Thank you, everyone.